want to grow, you have to be disciplined and there cannot be any substitute or compromise in being disciplined. I'll give you an example. It happened with us. It was the year 1989. I was in my fourth year. Of engineering. Unfortunately, very unfortunately, I underline that words. There was a clash between two sets of students in the Indian community. When I say clash, they did not fight physically, no. It was a cold war. They just didn't want to talk to each other, that's all. No fighting, no hands, fists fighting. Anymore. They just didn't want to talk to each other. This is a very good example, I want all of you to listen very attentively. You know, I am such a teacher who doesn't let his children sleep in the bus. I am a very bad teacher. I don't let children sleep in the bus. When I speak, I expect them to look into my eyes. They, there was a very, I mean, big cold war between two sets of children. This news, how we do not know, it really reached the ears of our ambassador in Moscow. Kharkov is down below in Ukraine. He is sitting in Moscow. How he came to know about it is still a mystery for me, we do not know. Suddenly one day, one of our senior most students who was doing his PhD in medicine, he came to our hostel and said, our ambassador has come. Which ambassador? Hey, Baba, there is only one ambassador in every country. He has come. He wants to meet us. He could not understand why the ambassador has come all the way from Moscow to Kharkov. Then we came to know that he had come to team on some work. He, was, he wanted to meet some minister. Because at that time it was all one country. So he had come, then he has dropped in to Kharkov. But why does he want to meet the students, Indian community students in Kharkov? Anyway, we went to meet him in the hotel. It was a nice suite. He inquired about our studies, about our welfare. Then he asked this question, who is the ambassador of India in Russia? A silly question. He's sitting right in front of us. Ah, maybe he wants to test our knowledge whether we know his name or not. So we said, sir, you are an ambassador, sir. He said, I know it. But besides me, who else is that ambassador? He said, he said it's not possible. Usually there is only one ambassador. Representing the interests of the country in another country. How can there be two ambassadors at the same time? He said, no, there are many ambassadors. Many? How is that possible? There are, he said. Don't you know? He asked me. He asked us. He said, sorry sir, we do not know. Pass. He gave up. Then he looked at us and said, each and every one of you is an ambassador of your country in here. I heard there is a rift between students. Did you come here to do politics? Or did you come here to study? Please remember my children, he said. At that time, he was 20 plus years old. I still remember it, and I can see him sitting in front of me. He said, children, please remember, each and every one of you is a representative of your country here. How you behave, local people, 
people will see you and judge not you, your parents and your country. How you behave, how you carry yourself, how you talk, what you think, what your perceptions are. Based on that, people, local people will judge you, not only you, your family, your parents and the country from where you are. Do you want people to laugh at your parents? Would you be happy? Is there anybody over here who says that I'll be very happy if somebody speaks it of my parents? Raise your hands dearly, I want to see that person. Please carry yourself in a dignified manner. You have come to another country. There might be difficulties. I do not say no to Language problem might be there. Food problem might be there. Cultural problems might be there. I do not disagree with you. I also live in this country, so I know what it is. But there is a way. I told you, you have got every right to voice your opinion. But there is a way to do it. How you tactfully, politely put it across is what matters most. You cannot just barge in into the room of your dean and say, Sir, I don't like this. Sorry, that doesn't matter. You know why? This is the age when you need to polish yourself. Habits, good or bad, they die hard. What you sow today, you get it tomorrow. My master always used to say, sow a thought, sow a thought, Reap an action. Sow an action. Reap a habit. Sow a habit. Reap a character. Sow a character. Reap your destiny. Everything is connected with your thoughts. As you think, so you are. How could Abdul Kalam become the president of India, son of a fisherman? How could Abraham Lincoln become the president of America? He was a very poor boy. Thoughts. Your way of thinking is what is important. You are different from others by your thoughts. Because of your thoughts, you speak, you act. Thoughts are inside you. Words and actions are reflection of what you are inside. Wherever I go, children just come to me. People come to me because I have trained myself to think positively. This is the age for you to train yourself. I can tell you what to do, but you have to do Your mother can cook your very delicious food, but who has to eat it? Teachers can guide you, parents can guide you, but who has to practice it? Teachers can take classes and teach you in the class. Who has to do the homework? And remember one good thing, my children. Don't look at your teacher as a man. 
Friends class. Horrible. It's such a horrible man. And 60 year old man is going to come. Remember, you will also become old one day. And you know where old age is waiting? Just outside. Around the corner. I still remember the day when I was sitting in this place, not in this room, similar class, and listening to lectures. I was also 17, 18 years old. And today I am 51 years old standing in front of you, still feeling young and energetic. Why you know? 